Welcome back guys. In today's video, I wanna talk about something that's not just a detailing product that's relatively too new to the market, but something that's relatively new to existence. And this chemical isn't even 10 years old since it was discovered. And that chemical is called borophene. Is this the next new buzzword for the detailing industry? First it was synthetic, then it was quartz, glass, graphene, ceramic, all this other, you know. Let's dive a little deeper and find out. First though, I wanted to show you what triggered this. A company called NanoPro LLC in Boynton Beach, Florida asked if they could send me some of their borophene coating product for me to include in a future test. They sent it late last year, so I said go ahead and send it. I'm getting ready to start my next new test, but first, remember when graphene was new to the market, no one knew about it, but all of a sudden everyone was raving about it. I was over here sounding the alarm bells about the health and safety of it, showing the research papers about how harmful it was, like permanent harm to your airways and reproduction system amongst other parts of your body. And I had SPS Graphene's first product that they originally had out onto, onto the market several years ago when this came out, and I took extra precautions around it, gloves, eyewear, and a respirator when I was installing it. And I feel like graphene, possibly borophene, Maybe one of these future late night attorney commercials. Have you been exposed to borophene between 2022 and 2024? You may be entitled to compensation. People just jump head first into these products, not considering the health and safety concerns, especially as a professional detailer where you're exposed to it day in and day out for multiple hours a day. The researcher in me has to see if we can find more on these other than just trusting a company's word for it that's trying to sell me something, especially a product like this that's so new to even existence. And so I challenge you to Google Borophene and see what you can find because there's not a whole lot out there. So this video took a lot of digging to see what I could come up with. So first up, I'll show you what I received and then we will go over the health safety concerns, anything else like that. So let's do it. Here we go. So the product that was sent, 50 mil of NanoPro Borophene Ultimate. And since they have sent me this, they've come out with a version 2.0. Don't know what the difference is. Um, this has a very choose nano feel to it which is that's who makes ceramic pro and you know there's a lot of similar colors similar claims etc that i've noticed here so i don't know if that's where it's made which is taiwan and china but again it has that kind of feel to it so looking through their brochure they that they sent with it uh it they sell graphene products marine etc but of course what we're interested in is the borophene and when I say it has a similar look and feel to Ceramic Pro, well, you be the judge there. So this product claims to be have a 30% higher gloss index than a standard coating 3000 Celsius resistance level. So just for reference, gold melts at around 1100 degrees Celsius, something like that. So you're talking about three times the resistance of that, of a melting point that melts metal. That's a pretty strong claim. Industry's first permanent ceramic coating, pretty sure there's others on the market. And this company's only been around since 2019. So we'll throw some scripture in with the materials. Also registered with Carfax. They sent me no info on how to do that, but they made me a certified installer. So as far as the install goes, safety requirements, don't inhale, ingest, and wear gloves. That's it, keep it away from your skin, eyes, away from children, wear gloves, and reminder that it has a 3000 degree Celsius resistance and 30% higher gloss, it's a permanent coating. You must apply it, four to six drops on the applicator, apply it, wait a minute, or if it's high humidity, wait 30 seconds. One layer of coating. That's it. Permanent doesn't say do not add any layer. It says do not add any additional layers to this application and it is permanent. So it doesn't, doesn't come with SDS form, MSDS, anything like that. No other health and safety requirements or precautions other than wear gloves, keep it away from your eyes and don't get it on your skin. So this permanent coating that says a 10 year minimum lifetime we're going to dive a little bit deeper to see if this is just 0.00001% 
borophene, like the graphene products of many of them out there, or if it's something else. So we're gonna dive more into borophene. So what is it? Simple Google search will show you that it's a monolayer of boron, boron-based instead of graphene, graphite-based. It wasn't confirmed until 2015. And primarily you're gonna find it's similar to graphene, but it's flexible, which is beneficial in a car coating. Looking at some of these papers, it's not stable outside of a vacuum. Inside a vacuum, like a lithium ion battery or something like that, that's where it's gonna be beneficial. So what I found in my research is that what they did is they took hydrogen and bonded it with it and made it borophane. There's several papers they talk about the benefits of using it in battery, electronics, things like that. Nothing in chemicals or anything like that. It's been quite difficult to find much on it because there really isn't much, uh, let alone in, into the safety aspect of it, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But I've gone through several articles, many of these research papers, I've read them, trying to find anything I could on safety or vehicular use or coating use, something like that. And it just comes down to battery storage, supercapacitors, electronics, things like that. So, uh, even so much that Tesla has invested quite a significant amount into borophene type batteries, borophene and graphene. So this paper here, it says it's very similar to borophene and borophane when they add hydrogen, but very similar to graphene. You know, we've done the research on graphene you saw my video a few years ago where graphene is some nasty stuff. So if it's very similar, then, you know, there could be potential health hazards here in uh, exp uh, extended exposure and so forth. But lots of these are, are uh, theoretical uses in what the research was involving. But renewable energy devices, ultra-fast sensors, etc. And that's where it really has a benefit. Almost all of them call graphene and borophene cousins. This article says there's more research that needs to be done. It's still difficult to make it stable outside of a vacuum because it oxidizes so quickly. Here's an article from MIT. So this is from 2019, so this is an older article raving about the joys of borophene, but there really hasn't been a lot of research. Remember, at this point in this article, it's only four years old, and people know that it oxidizes and they can mix it with other things, but powerful lithium-ion batteries would be the next step. On top, on top of lithium-ion batteries would be borophene-based batteries, which again, I said Tesla has a significant investment in that. So here's borophane, as I said earlier, that is actually stable outside of a vacuum. If there is anything in this coating, it could be potential that it's borophane, not borophene, because obviously the coating is not in a vacuum. You mix it with SiO2, quartz, silica, whatever, who knows how stable it is there. But we don't even know how what the percentage of it is in there. If it's like some of these other coatings where they put 0.001% and call it a graphene coating, or in this instance, a borophene coating, borophene coating, anatomically thin version of graphite, which of course is graphene or related to graphene. But it says the result, it is highly reactive, making it vulnerable to oxidation. Bond it with hydrogen, it will no longer react with oxygen when in open air. But more research is needed, more research is needed. That's the same thing that's happened with graphene when I was looking through those. Another article talks about promising applications for gas sensing energy storage and conversion. Nothing about a coating though. So here's an article from 2020, so already three years old, and graphene or borophene would have been five years old at the time, showing that it could be stable. Just a simple search on the internet for safety or borophene safety, borophene concerns. There's really nothing on it. And again, this is why when graphene first came out, I talked about it. So jumping over to the company's website, NanoPro, they have several coatings that they offer, but again, the borophene one is the one we're interested in just because it's new to the market. They do have a 2.0 now, don't know what has changed. You can buy the 1.0 on their website. The 2.0, it says it's available only for trained installers. So there's the website of what I would assume is their business front. It says five times stronger, than any 9H coating. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a 10H coating, which that's the top of the diamond hardness scale. So you can see on their website, $155. You can buy the 1.0, $184 is what the 2.0 maximum kit costs. 
you can add to cart. You don't need to be a trained installer for that, certified installer, even though they sent me a certified installer certificate. So this is the only MSDS or safety data sheet that I could find on the internet with anything with borophene, and it's a nanoparticle powder from a company in Delaware. And really it has toxicity, no data available. Make, dust may cause irritation. If you get it on your skin, wash it off. You know, so nothing has really been tested. This is just kind of generic SDS, MSDS language. You can extinguish it with water, but there has been really no testing that I can see that has been done on this. And again, sounding the alarm bells on this, that unless you know what you are touching, putting in the air, inhaling, you better take extra precaution. So back on the company's website, uh, contact is Boynton Beach, Florida, and has a 561 number, and there's a warranty page. So let's, let's look a little closer at this warranty. So it says it covers, it covers loss of gloss, but it doesn't cover hydrophobics, which for most instances, when people say a coating's failed, as I do, uh, when the hydrophobics are done, coatings failed. You know, you can try to bring it back and clog it, unclog it, but they talk about their warranty here. A permanent warranty shall apply to all borophene ceramic coating applications. So of course there's an asterisk at the end. Well, there isn't here, but it's a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. General conditions, it only applies if the vehicle stays registered, it's installed by a professional installer. Again, I apologize this being so small, the vehicles have to be registered. The warranty has to stay in the name of the vehicle owner and cannot be transferred. That's different than Ceramic Pro's warranty. Ceramic Pro, you can transfer the warranty. Exclusions. Pre-existing damage to a painted surface. Swirl marks are excluded. Marring is excluded. Isn't it supposed to be an anti-scratch coating? Well, it's excluded. Failed clear coat, water, spots, and so forth. Down here, number nine. Any loss of time or use of vehicle when it undergoes an inspection or a treatment. So the vehicle has to be inspected annually to maintain this lifetime warranty. It has to be done by an approved installer and it has to be within 30 days of the anniversary. Failure to do it voids the warranty. You have to come in every year within that they have to go maintain and put more stuff on top of it to continue to kick the can down the road to maintain that warranty. So again, more about the company, uh, this NanoPro, they uh, Chamber of Commerce in Florida, Boynton Beach, it's registered to, that says 29 Mayfair, there's 27 Mayfair. So it's registered to a townhome. And it even says it on Google Maps there, NanoPro, registered right there. So open corporates, you can look at the company. It was incorporated in 2017. The same lady that talks about on the blog on their website, Sandra Simonilli, it's there. And there's other names listed as well when you look at their LLC. So through the state of Florida, again, this is all public information. I'm not trying to expose anything or whatever. You can look this up yourself. Uh, there's another address in Tonawanda, which is Buffalo, New York. Again, that's an apartment up there is where that's registered. So you can find their articles of incorporation, 2017, same lady, NanoPro LLC. They amended it to change some names a couple years later, but again, relatively new company, it's been around less than five years. You can have a 10 year warranty, five year warranty or permanent warranty for a company that hasn't even been around five years. That uh, warranty looked very familiar to Ceramic Pro. So here's the Ceramic Pro warranty. Must be installed by a certified installer. Have to notify them within 30 days of a claim. Vehicles over three months old have to be polished before application. Warranty has to stay in the name of the vehicle owner, but can only be it, this one can be transferred. So what do they exclude? High spots, streaks, low spots, not covered. Swirl marks. Again, they advertise it as filling in swirls or covering swirls. Anti-scratch doesn't cover it. Damage caused by manual or automatic car washes. If you wash it incorrectly, it's not covered. That makes sense. That's something that you do. So the language is pretty much identical from the two companies. Looks like the NanoPro probably took this and used it because Ceramic Pro is a big company. They probably had lots of attorneys involved, so they just used this. But the warranty for Ceramic Pro Gold, which is of course a lifetime warranty, but requires an annual inspection. Otherwise, if you miss it, it becomes a five-year warranty. Annual inspection has to be carried out by an approved installer 30 days within the anniversary. Where have we seen that before? So in failure to undertake the inspection, will void the warranty after the five-year start. 
and you have to, the installer charges a fee for it and then they top it. So it just, again, kicks the can down the road. So that's about all I want to talk about with the Borophene and this company that had sent me this coating. I'm curious to see your thoughts, but my big concerns would be the safety of borophene. Don't want this to create future harm if there is something in this that could potentially be damaging for your health or safety. In the meantime, we will of course include it in an upcoming test and see how it performs. They don't warranty the hydrophobic properties, but that's what we're testing as we always do. So thanks again for watching guys. I know this video got kind of long, but we'll see you soon.